Andrzej Tadeusz Bona Wenchra Kosciuszko was a Polish-Lithuanian military engineer and a military leader who became a national hero in Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, and the United States. He fought in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth struggles against Russia and Prussia, and on the American side in the American Revolutionary War. As Supreme Commander of the Polish National Armed Forces, he led the 1794 Kosciuszko Uprising. Kosciuszko was born in February 1746 in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In a village that is now in Belarus, his exact birth date is unknown. At age 20, he graduated from the Corps of Cadets in Warsaw, Poland, but after the outbreak of a civil war involving the Bar Confederation in 1768, Kosciuszko moved to France in 1769 to pursue further studies. He returned to Poland in 1774, two years after its first partition, and took a position as tutor in Joseph Sylwester Sosnowski's household. After Kosciuszko attempted to elope with his employer's daughter and was severely beaten by the father's retainers, he returned to France. In 1776, Kosciuszko moved to North America, where he took part in the American Revolutionary War as a colonel in the Continental Army. An accomplished military architect, he designed and oversaw the construction of state-of-the-art fortifications, including those at West Point, New York. In 1783, in recognition of his services, the Continental Congress promoted him to Brigadier General. Returning to Poland in 1784, Kosciuszko was commissioned a Major General in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Army in 1789. After the Polish-Russian War of 1792 had resulted in the Second Partition of Poland, he organized an uprising against Russia in March 1794. Serving as its Nachenik, Russian forces captured him at the Battle of Maceja Vissa in October 1794. The defeat of the Kosciuszko uprising that November led to Poland's third partition in 1795, which ended the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth's independent existence for 123 years. In 1796, following the death of Tsaritsa Catherine the Great, Kosciuszko was pardoned by her successor, Tsar Paul I, and he emigrated to the United States. A close friend of Thomas Jefferson, with whom he shared ideals of human rights, Kosciuszko wrote her will in 1798 dedicating his American assets to the education and freedom of U.S. slaves. He eventually returned to Europe and lived in Switzerland until his death in 1817. The execution of his will later proved difficult and the funds were never used for the purpose he had intended. Early Life Kosciuszko was born in February 1746 in the village of Marechaus Chisna, a folwick near the town of Kosov Polski. His exact birth date is unknown, commonly cited of February 4 and February 12. The area lay within the Polsy region, then in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, a part of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Kosciuszko was the youngest son of a member of the Szalokta, Ludwig Tadeusz Kosciuszko, an officer in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth Army, and his wife Tekla, N.E.A.Q.T. Ratomska. The Kosciuszkos held the Polish Rock Three coat of arms. At the time of Tadeusz Kosciuszko's birth, the family possessed modest landholdings in the Grand Duchy, which were worked by 31 peasant families. Tadeusz was baptized by the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, thereby receiving the names Andre, Tadeusz, and Bonaventura. His paternal family was ethnically Lithuanian Ruthenian and traced their ancestry to Konstanty Fyodorovich Kosciuszko, a courtier of Polish king and Grand Duke of Lithuania Sigismund I the Old. Kosciuszko's maternal family, the Ratomskis, were also Ruthenian. Modern Belarusian writers interpret his Ruthenian or Lithuanian heritage as Belarusian. He once described himself as a Litvin, a term that denoted inhabitants, of whatever ethnicity, of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, within the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth.
Modern Belarusian writers interpret Litvin as designating a Belarusian, before the word Belarusian had come into use. Kosciuszko, however, did not speak the Belarusian language. His family had become Polonized as early as the 16th century. Like most Polish-Lithuanian nobility of the time, the Kosciuszkos spoke Polish and identified with Polish culture. In 1755, Kosciuszko began attending school in Lyubashiv, but never finished due to his family's financial straits after his father's death in 1758. Poland's King Stanislaw August Poniatowski established a corps of cadets in 1765 at what is now Warsaw University to educate military officers and government officials. Kosciuszko enrolled in the corps on December 18, 1765, likely thanks to the patronage of the Zartoryski family. The school emphasized military subjects in the liberal arts, and after graduating on December 20, 1766, Kosciuszko was promoted to Korazy. He stayed on as a student instructor and by 1768 had attained the rank of captain. European travels in 1768, civil war broke out in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. When the Bar Confederation sought to depose King Stanislaw August Poniatowski, one of Kosciuszko's brothers, Joseph, fought on the side of the insurgents. Faced with a difficult choice between the rebels and his sponsors, the king and the Zartoryski family, who favored a gradualist approach to shedding Russian domination, Kosciuszko chose to leave Poland. In late 1769, he and a colleague, the noted artist Alexander Orlovsky, were granted royal scholarships, and on October 5 they set off for Paris. They wanted to further their military education, but as foreigners they were barred from enrolling in French military academies, and so they enrolled instead in the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture. There Kosciuszko pursued his interest in drawing and painting and took private lessons in architecture from the noted French architect Jean Rodolphe Peronet. Kosciuszko, however, did not give up on improving his military knowledge. He audited lectures for five years and frequented the libraries of the Paris military academies. His exposure to the French Enlightenment, along with the religious tolerance practiced in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, strongly influenced his later career. The French economic theory of physiocracy made a particularly strong impression on his thinking. He also developed his artistic skills, and while his career would take him in a different direction, all his life he continued drawing and painting. In the first partition of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1772, Russia, Prussia and Austria annexed large swaths of Polish-Lithuanian territory and gained influence over the internal politics of the reduced Polish and Lithuanian states. When Kosciuszko finally returned home in 1774, he found that his brother Joseph had squandered most of the family fortune, and there was no place for him in the army, as he could not afford to buy an officer's commission. He took a position as tutor to the family of the magnate, province governor in Hetman Joseph Sylwester Sosnowski and fell in love with the governor's daughter Ludvika. Their elopement was thwarted by her father's retainers. Kosciuszko received a thrashing at their hands, an event that may have led to his later antipathy to class distinctions. In the autumn of 1775, he decided to emigrate to avoid Sosnowski and his retainers. In late 1775, he attempted to join the Saxon army but was turned down and decided to return to Paris. There he learned of the outbreak of the American Revolutionary War, in which the British colonies in North America had revolted against the Crown and begun their struggle for independence. The first American successes were well publicized in France, and the French people and government openly supported the revolutionaries' cause. American Revolutionary War. On learning of the American Revolution, Kosciuszko, himself a man of revolutionary aspirations, sympathetic to the American cause and an advocate of human rights, sailed for America in June 1776 along with other foreign officers. 
likely with the help of a French supporter of the American revolutionaries, Pierre Beaumarquais. On August 30, 1776, Kosciuszko submitted an application to the United States Congress. He was assigned to the United States War Department the next day. Northern Region Kosciuszko's first task was building fortifications at Fort Billingsport in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to protect the banks of the Delaware River and prevent a possible British advance up the river to Philadelphia. He initially served as a volunteer in the employ of Benjamin Franklin, but on October 18, 1776, Congress commissioned him a colonel of engineers in the Continental Army. In spring 1777, Kosciuszko was attached to the Northern Army under Major General Horatio Gates, arriving at the Canadian border in May 1777. Subsequently posted to Fort Ticonderoga, he reviewed the defenses of what had been one of the most formidable fortresses in North America. His surveys prompted him to strongly recommend the construction of a battery on Sugar Loaf, a high point overlooking the fort. His prudent recommendation, in which his fellow engineers concurred, was turned down by the garrison commander, Brigadier General Arthur Street, Clare. This proved a tactical blunder. When a British army under General John Burgoyne arrived in July 1777, Burgoyne did exactly what Kosciuszko had warned of and had his engineers place artillery on the hill. With the British in complete control of the high ground, the Americans realized their situation was hopeless and abandoned the fortress with Howard Lear shot fired in the siege of Ticonderoga. The British advance force nipped hard on the heels of the outnumbered and exhausted Continentals as they fled south. Major General Philip Schuyler, desperate to put distance between his men and the pursuers, ordered Kosciuszko to delay the enemy. Kosciuszko designed an engineer's solution. His men felled trees, dammed streams, and destroyed bridges and causeways. Encumbered by their huge supply train, the British began to bog down, giving the Americans the time needed to safely withdraw across the Hudson River. Gates tapped Kosciuszko to survey the country between the opposing armies, choose the most defensible position, and fortify it. Finding just such a position near Saratoga, overlooking the Hudson at Bemis Heights, Kosciuszko laid out a strong array of defenses, nearly impregnable from any direction. His judgment and meticulous attention to detail frustrated the British attacks during the Battle of Saratoga, and Gates accepted the surrender of Burgoyne's force there on October 16, 1777. The dwindling British army had been dealt a sound defeat, turning the tide to an American advantage. Kosciuszko's work at Saratoga received great praise from Gates, who later told his friend Drive, Benjamin Rush. He great tacticians of the campaign were hills and forests, which a young Polish engineer was skillful enough to select for my encampment. At some point in 1777, Kosciuszko composed a polonaise and scored it for the harpsichord. Named for him, and with lyrics by Rajnald Suchardalski, it later became popular with Polish patriots during the November 1830 uprising. Around that time, Kosciuszko was assigned a black orderly, Agrippa Hull, whom he would treat as an equal and a friend. In March 1778 Kosciuszko arrived at West Point, New York and spent more than two years strengthening the fortifications and improving the stronghold's defenses. It was these defenses that the American general Benedict Arnold subsequently attempted to surrender to the British when he became a traitor. Soon after Kosciuszko had finished fortifying West Point, in August 1780, General George Washington granted Kosciuszko's request to transfer to combat duty with the Southern Army. Kosciuszko's West Point fortifications would be widely praised as innovative for the time. Southern region after traveling south through rural Virginia in October 1780, Kosciuszko proceeded to North Carolina to report to his former commander General Gates. However, following Gates' disastrous defeat at Camden on August 16, 1780, the Continental Congress had selected Washington's choice. 
Major General Nathaniel Green, to replace the disgraced Gates as commander of the Southern Department. When Green formally assumed command on December 3, 1780, he retained Kosciuszko as his chief engineer. By then, he had been praised by both Gates and Green. Over the course of this campaign, Kosciuszko was placed in command of building bateaux, citing the location for camps, scouting river crossings fortifying positions, and developing intelligence contacts. Many of his contributions were instrumental in preventing the destruction of the Southern Army. This was especially so during the famous Race to the Dan, when British General Charles Cornwallis chased Green across 200 miles of rough backcountry in January and February 1781. Thanks largely to a combination of Green's tactics and Kosciuszko's bateau, and accurate scouting of the rivers ahead of the main body, the Continentals safely crossed each river, including the Yadkin and the Dan. Cornwallis, having no boats, and finding no way to cross the Swollen Dan, finally gave up the chase and withdrew back into North Carolina. The Continentals regrouped south of Halifax, Virginia, where Kosciuszko had earlier, at Green's request, established a fortified depot. During the race to the Dan, Kosciuszko had helped select the site where Green eventually returned to fight Cornwallis at Guilford Courthouse. Though tactically defeated, the Americans all but destroyed Cornwallis' her army as an effective fighting force and gained a permanent strategic advantage in the South. Thus, when Green began his reconquest of South Carolina in the spring of 1781, he summoned Kosciuszko to rejoin the main body of the Southern Army. The combined forces of the Continentals and Southern Militia gradually forced the British from the back country into the coastal ports during the latter half of 1781 and, on August 16, Kosciuszko participated in the Second Battle of Camden. At 96, Kosciuszko besieged the Star Fort from May 22 to June 18. During the unsuccessful siege, he suffered his only wound in seven years of service bayoneted in the buttocks, during an assault by the fort's defenders on the approach trench that he was constructing. Kosciuszko subsequently helped fortify the American bases in North Carolina. He had become engaged in these operations after the death of his friend Colonel John Lawrence, taking over Lawrence's intelligence network in the area. He commanded two cavalry squadrons and an infantry unit, and his last known battlefield command of the war occurred at James Island, South Carolina, on November 14, 1782, in what has been described as the Continental Army's final armed action of the war. He was very nearly killed as his small force was routed. A month later, he was among the Continental troops that reoccupied Charleston following the British evacuation of the city. Kosciuszko spent the rest of the war there, conducting a fireworks display on April 23, 1783, to celebrate the signing of the Treaty of Paris earlier that month mustering out having not been paid in his seven years of service. In late May 1783, Kosciuszko decided to collect the salary owed to him. That year, he was asked by Congress to supervise the fireworks during the July 4 celebrations at Princeton, New Jersey. On October 13, 1783, Congress promoted him to Brigadier General. But he still had not received his back pay. Many other officers and soldiers were in the same situation. While waiting for his pay, unable even to finance a voyage back to Europe, Kosciuszko, like a number of others, lived on money borrowed from the Polish-Jewish banker Haim Solomon. Eventually, he would receive a certificate for $12,280, at 6%, to be paid on January 1, 1784, and the right to 500 acres of land, but only if he chose to settle in the United States. For the winter of 1783-84, his former commanding officer, General Green, invited Kosciuszko to stay at his mansion. He was also inducted into the Society of the Cincinnati.